Hey world, welcome to the Sharice Nicole podcast. I created this space where I'll discuss life lessons, personal stories, observations, unsolicited advice, and ramblings that go on in my chattering mind. Every so often, I will pull in guests to provide different perspectives and discuss a range of topics from nutrition to travel and all things in between. So without further ado, let's get into it. Today's episode is very free-flowing. I'm joined by my friend of over, how long have we known each other? Uh, Almost 20 years. 20 years, and she's joined me on the podcast. I'm going to be honest, I didn't think you were going to. I I was going to reach out to you, but I was like, I don't know if you're, like, comfortable with that. So this is, (laughs) this is cool. Yeah, this is really interesting. And I'm actually, like, obviously I'm a big fan of the podcast. I think, um... A lot of people in your circle will probably say that this is a good way for us to get to know you. Like you've said, we've been friends for a long time, but I think I'm learning things about you that are really refreshing. And um, and that's pretty cool, actually, that you can still learn so much about someone after such a long time. So, yeah, really cool. I know when I when I created this, I was like, that's kind of why my first episode, I was like, this is so scary for me. I'm being very vulnerable because I know that I'm going to get into topics and things that I haven't really shared or expressed with anyone. So, yeah, welcome. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's really cool. And it's also really relatable because I mean, like listening to the episodes, you can really I'm not a content creator. But the second episode, when you were talking about that, I felt like that address a lot of things that don't necessarily have to do with social media and content creation uh, that a lot of people can probably relate to. And I think this is really good for you too, um, to get away from like YouTube and Instagram and all those really visual um, outlets and get into something where you do have to go a little deeper because, you know, you don't have to be so, it's not so visually concentrated, right? So. You know what I was thinking about today? I was like, what I'm doing right now is actually so therapeutic because they always say in therapy anyways is like that's why there is such thing as therapy it's like you're speaking you're speaking to your subconscious thoughts or whatever and I remember when I was going and when I went to therapy for that brief moment there was a bed and I was always sitting across from her on the chair yeah and she was like you can use the bed if you want and I was like well why is that an option she was like some people feel like it's easier to speak when they're more relaxed yeah. or when they're when they don't have to like face you and so I tried it and honestly it was there was such a difference so I kind of feel like speaking out my thoughts and things like that is very therapeutic to do so even on the podcast so. yeah and yeah. it's a good way for you to discover yourself too like I always joke that I kind of have like team meetings with myself and I basically talk to myself because I love therapy but it is not the most affordable way um of going about things so sometimes i just need to have like a quick staff meeting and i just need to kind of like talk my talk things out and that's the way that i walk through certain things feelings emotions that i wouldn't be able to to understand otherwise to make sense in your in your mind yeah like so i try i write things out in my journal and that helps but it's different it's a different experience when you actually speak it out and actually i've been doing more more of that lately i've been actually looking at myself in the mirror and like saying hey sharice like you're this this that or you know affirmations and yeah, yeah i do kind of feel silly but at the same time it's <laughs> like it's it's different it's a different experience so yeah, do, when you have your team meetings, are you, like, doing that? You're in the mirror talking to yourself? No, okay. I, I don't. I'm not in the mirror quite. Like, I what? just, I can't do it in the mirror. <laughs> I feel like whenever I do that, maybe I'm just not at that point. I feel a little silly, and for that reason, affirmations are, are like, I understand the power of affirmations and the power of living intentionally, but I don't think affirmations are for everyone. I think there are different ways to go about getting the same result. But for me, what works is that I usually go for a drive and I'll park somewhere like in a park or wherever and I'll pull out my phone, open up the voice notes and I'll just kind of like start talking. And it's a journal, but it's just an audio journal. And I find like the first few minutes are always really awkward. And that's why I don't like listening to them, but they're really awkward really lots of ums and ahs and filler words and almost laughing at how ridiculous it is Mm -hmm. but once i start expressing how i'm feeling and what i'm feeling and why i think i might be feeling that way and what that could really mean 
then I find that I can speak for like 15, 20 minutes when at the beginning I'm just thinking, oh, this is going to be like a five minute video and no more than that. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot easier too than journaling because journaling you have to keep up with your thoughts as you're writing and sometimes you have to slow down because you're writing them out whereas when you speak and you express yourself you're just going with whatever you're thinking about Mm -hmm. so that's another reason why I wanted to do a podcast because I'm like I'm way better at speaking it out than writing it out Mm -hmm. like when I write it out I feel like I'm not properly articulating what I feel and so there's that barrier but with like speaking it out it's like way easier to me um, and then another thing I was gonna, I was thinking about is, yeah, it's always awkward in the beginning when you're like talking to yourself or recording yourself, mm-hmm. but then once you get into it, you see how easy it is. It's yeah. like, you just can go for 20 minutes. Yeah. And yeah. do you like listen back? Do you play back? I don't like it to be honest. I don't, I don't love to just like play it back and listen. Cause I do feel like it's almost like therapy, free therapy. So I get to record and speak out and delve into feelings for however long I need to. Mm-hmm. And then I walk away from them with the clarity that I needed to get from it. Mm-hmm. Whereas it's the same thing. Like if you go to therapy, you're not going to walk away from it and try to remember everything that you said in therapy, but you're just trying to walk away from the feeling that you gain at the end, the clarity and, you know, perhaps the the small things that you need to dive deeper out of that clarity that you've gained and you can pursue leaving the the session. So it's the same way. Mm-hmm. I don't listen to them. Sometimes I keep them with the intention of listening to them later and I never do. So I always delete them. But um, yeah, they're there. I guess so. Yeah, that makes sense. It's like it did its purpose. It was mm-hmm. for you to like release something, a thought or a feeling or an emotion. Yeah. And then that's it. Yeah, pretty much. I guess so, because for me, I don't ever, re- like, I really don't reread my journal entries. It's weird. I, it's cringy. Yes, it is so cringy. Why is it so cringy? Like, like I wrote this? <laughs> and I have I have my uh, diary from, like, grade 7 and 8, where oh I was just gosh. talking about stupidness. And, like, I just don't. I can't get through it. I cannot get through it. Speaking of which, though, it reminds me, like, sometimes when I'm cleaning up my email, I'll come across some emails that we've exchanged from, like, oh, yeah, who knows this. where. And I'm just thinking, like, Ew. wow, that's really what was the priority at that time. It's... It's refreshing, but it's also kind of like scary. It almost makes me wish we could go back and be like, okay, listen, we're 22. Let's maybe focus on more important things, you know? Uh, why were we even emailing like you were in a different country? I yeah, yeah. Like sometimes I was traveling and other times I don't even know. Like we were just emailing for fun, I guess, like catching up on stuff. And it was before social media. So. Oh, that's so true. I remember I used to email my cousin too like that. Oh, yeah. that's so interesting what you used to do. Kids Before these days will never media. know. They will never know. They'll be like, why are you emailing us so What's um, email? Archaic. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. Ugh, never. Anyways. Well. But you mentioned um, affirmation. So, like, how does that work for you and how does that help you feel? I don't know because, like, I'm like you. I don't... Like, people are like, oh, just write these down and repeat them three times a day for five minutes. I tried that and I was like, uh, and I would forget about them. So I, I don't know. I don't really use it. I try to, to use it when I'm speaking in the mirror to myself, but like, I'll just make them up as I go along. There isn't mm-hmm. like some, a set list that I always repeat every day. Yeah. Um, I think it's more important that I like start the day with an intention or something like to think of for the day. But even then I'm like not good at it. I'm not consistent. So yeah, yeah I'm kind of the same as you. Yeah. I'm kind of the same as you. Like aff- affirmations are nice, a nice to have, but I don't really like, I don't use them Yeah. that much. <laughs> yeah. The consistency is, is definitely a problem. And uh, I don't know. I think, yeah, it's good to start your day with an intention or even a plan, a goal, whatever people choose to call it. I think most of I'm going to speak for myself I don't want to say anyone else but I think most of my issues I find is because sometimes the things that I want in my conscious mind are not aligned with the things that my subconscious believes and I have to kind of catch myself and say okay for whatever reason there is a block there and then find a way to fix that block and usually that works for me rather than like constantly repeating things or affirmations Mm, and all that stuff and also like affirmations won't like they don't just do their job on their own like you there's a certain way you have to apply them so like i said some people do it repeat it three times a day for x amount of minutes Mm -hmm. some people repeat it twice a day it's like a constant reminder you have to like 
like nail it into your subconscious mind like what you're actually saying to yourself but you also have to say it with Feeling. feeling yeah and like I remember I used to I was kind of OD with this but um, when I was really trying to make affirmations work in my life I, I got a little notebook and I would I don't know I picked out five affirmations that I would literally write I think I wrote them 50 times every day each of them 50 times every day but sometimes I would just like write it really fast just to kind of get it over with and yeah get through it and then I was like, why aren't these things coming true? Like, I'm doing everything. But it's yeah. like, I wasn't, there was no feeling involved with it. I was just kind of like aimlessly writing this. And I was like, all right, this is not working. So so how long did you do it for? I think I did it for 20 days or so. Because I was I was reading um, Manifest Now by uh, I, I did. You, you, yeah, you, you <laughs> recommended that book to me. It was a quick read yeah. to like an hour long or something. Yeah, so yeah. in one of the chapters, she talks about doing that. And then, you know, I've heard of online like that working for people. So I'm like, okay, let me try it for me. And um, it did not. So, <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, in the process of, of writing those affirmations every day for almost three weeks, what did you think came of it? I mean, you obviously understand that you need to have feeling behind every affirmation. But is there anything else that came of it that perhaps would help you if you were to repeat that cycle? Uh, like clarity. So like, yeah, I understand how important it is to have feelings behind it. Mm -hmm. Uh, and also how important it is to be like in a good mind space when you're writing it. Cause sometimes when I'd be writing it, I'd be tired and then I'd be trying to get it over with, or I'd be upset. And it's like, you have to be, you have to have a good, clear conscious. You have to be going into it with a good mind state. And, um, and that's, that's what I would change, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> But you recently yeah. did something similar. Um, I think it was Deepak Chopra's 21 day of, Days of Abundance. Yeah, that How was How was cool. that for you? That was better because like when I did the original um, affirmations, that was in September and like I didn't know what I knew now about mm -hmm. like just um, law of attraction and everything like that. But when I did the Deepak Chopra challenge, which is like a challenge of like 21 days of like these um, lessons or these little exercises you have to do, I yeah. was more... I was like more involved with it. So he would change up the exercise each day. He'd be like, write a letter to nature, write a letter to your like younger self. What are your fears and stuff? And I felt like that was more impactful to me because they were like short little exercises, but yeah. I was more, I understood the full depth depth of it. Yeah. yeah. I, I was just more involved. And then that was, that was good. That was a good experience for me. I actually just reread some of the entries that I wrote because yeah, they were so nice. They were so good. But you did it too, right? Or did you do it? No, I actually haven't. So I know you shared it. You had a group uh, where you shared that for 21 days. And at that time, I wasn't able to... And I knew I wouldn't be able to commit to it for the 21 days at the time. So I figured, okay, I'm going to save it. And then I'll come back to it when I can. Mm -hmm. um, but I really wanted to, I guess, get your opinion on what you felt came out of that experience. Like after 21 days, how did you feel when you completed it? It's not like you arrive at this place where it's like, oh, I'm more enlightened, you know? <laughs> it's just, it's how you take it each day you you take part of the, in the exercises. So for me, it just gave me a better, I guess a better like understanding of life, a different perspective, a different way of looking at things. Yeah. And I think that came in with the lesson or the exercises that he gave me in that day. I think one of them I'd never thought of. One of them said, um, you know, list uh, the, your five favorite traits of your mother. And then like also list what wow. traits you have that are similar to your mother's and it's like things like that. I don't think of on a day to day. So it was really cool to like get into those type of, um, I guess that type of introspection. But yeah, I don't, I don't feel like any, I've transformed or anything, but it was really good. But the thing with transformation is that it's not always noticeable. It's very subtle. I right? So. so when you have a 21 day, even though it might just seem like it's three weeks out of 52 weeks a year. But once you complete that, it's a very subtle change in the way that you think and you feel. And even just what you said, right? Like having that example where you're writing about five things that you love about your mom and five things that you love about yourself or things of that nature. In the moment, it doesn't seem like such a transformative experience, but in the long run, you might notice like, okay, the way you react to your mom or that you um, that you interact with her changes because of that experience that you've had yourself. 
I guess so. So maybe I don't really know. Maybe I'm not aware of the connections that it gave me in my life. I really, I don't know. It's hard to tell sometimes. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I think it's <laughs> it's really cool for other people also to notice those changes in you. So like, you've been on this spiritual growth for how long now? I'd say I, uh, I don't even know. I'd, I'd say around August last year is when there was a lot of changes that started happening in my life. Um, yeah. But I think prior <laughs> to that, you probably had probably had like a sh like there's always a shift that happens almost like when you say you want to eat healthy you don't yeah. go from wanting to eat healthy to juice cleanse the next day right there's usually like a long period before that and then you arrive at that point where it almost seems like you decided to go on a juice cleanse ran randomly but mm -hmm. it's been months Brewing. years like yeah a, i don't know what that when that's been for me i don't know i would say it's been like <laughs> personally i would say it's been it's been about three years for for you because i'm thinking about um the trip that we went on together and the person that you were at that time and the changes that i've seen in you since are vegas yeah since vegas so we went to vegas in august 2016 so that was almost four years ago and oh, wow. yeah almost four years ago Damn. and wow. i can say like <laughs> in that time there have been a lot of changes in you um, in terms of like how you eat, in terms of your spiritual growth, in terms of just, I think, how you perceive yourself and how you present yourself to others as well. Interesting. Yeah. So I would say, although for you, What's maybe it seems, <laughs> it seems like you only started last year. I think you probably started much, much longer than that. And then maybe it catapulted last year because of perhaps changes in your life that you needed to make. You know what? Like, I feel like in general, my life's trajectory changed when I was 26, which was 26, 2000, 2016. Yeah. yeah, which is weird. But no, I think it's like around the time where I first launched my, my blog, <clears throat> because before then I was just like living through my 20s aimlessly, like going to work, coming home, living for the weekends. Yeah. And I was like, there's some, there's more to life for me. I don't know what it is yet, but... I know there's more and then when I finally committed and created my blog um, that was like my creative outlet that was like a place for me to like look forward to something else outside of yeah. like the generic like work lifestyle and so I don't know maybe maybe it could have even started then probably because did. like if it didn't like if I didn't start a, a blog then I wouldn't be here I don't think I'd be doing a podcast now I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't have this online creator Stuff presence. like I wouldn't even yeah. yeah, I wouldn't even have all that. So it's crazy. I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think that's when it started. <laughs> yeah, so it's always interesting to kind of like sit and look back to when when things really start because it's always I don't know, I find like, you know, the, yeah. the date that you have in mind is it's never the real date. It's always really interesting when you go back. Hmm. So that's that's really fun. That's cool. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. It's <laughs> you know because like I actually had a conversation with another friend and I'm like I don't know if you can tell but I'm a little different she's like um no I could tell like even before this. <laughs> I was like oh really like really yeah <laughs> but no that's cool because yeah I, I think everyone I th it's healthy to grow mm -hmm. it's healthy to mature and then it's also very healthy for your friendships to mature along with you and you that's can only like, hope for that though. oh yes yeah. Because yeah. sometimes people don't grow with you, you just outgrow them. Or you outgrow each other. And that's okay, too. Yeah. That's okay, too. That's scary to me. Because it's like, when you... And I always have this conversation with my brother. It's like, when I look around and I look at... And I take maybe my top 10 friends of my 20s, I'd like to think that they can come into my 30s with me. But, like, everyone's life changes. You never know what's going to happen. And, yeah, you may outgrow people. And, yeah, it's just kind of like, oh, no, who am I going to outgrow? Like, <laughs> It's yeah. gonna happen. I yeah. want to take you all, but like it's just not realistic. I've already outgrown like a lot of people, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I think a lot of people have outgrown me too, and that process happened very gradually. Gradually, but it, it happened. I think for me, perhaps I don't feel too bad badly about it because it happened mutually. It wasn't like 
you know, one person was still clinging on and the other person was trying really hard to make it work. It just mm-hmm. kind of made, got to a point where it, it's almost like if you wake up one day and you realize that it's been so long since you've spoken to a certain person and you don't really miss them, right? Like you don't miss them. You don't feel the urge to reach out to them, to connect, to catch up or anything of that sort. I think that's a pretty good indicator that you don't really have anything else to say to each other. And you just got to let those go and move on. But I think it's harder in your teens when that Mm -hmm. happens because Mm -hmm. you don't understand yourself yet. So it's really hard to understand how you could, you know, be such good friends with someone one day. And then maybe, I don't know, a month later or a week later, just feel like I don't really feel really good in this relation, in this friendship or relationship. Yeah. Um, As you get older, you do understand that some friendships, they're not meant to be permanent. You know, they're meant to be for a period of your life. Yeah. Just like relationships. Or to help you grow. It's like, it's if they're there for your for a season, for a reason, and then it's like, whatever you learn from it, then you can take it moving forward. But I feel like losing a friend in your 20s, your late 20s, is maybe even a harder loss than your adolescence. Because, like, who cares when you're a teen? It depends on the kind of friendship you had. I do think um, some friendships, some friendships, I, I wouldn't say that I've moved away from them. I just think that I've categorized them differently. Like, they're no longer people that I would say... I would call friends, but perhaps they're, they could be acquaintances or they could be, you know, people that I could still go to for certain things. So it's still a, a beneficial, a mutually beneficial relationship, but it's not a friendship anymore. We've moved out of that zone and that's all you have to be okay with that shifting as well. Um, and I, I think for me going into my thirties and leaving my twenties behind, it's about more so making sure that when I attach the word friend to someone, they actually deserve it. It's not just like, oh, I met you. We got along really well. We're Mm -hmm. friends. No, we're not friends. We're like, we have a good time together. We vibe well, but we haven't attained that friendship level yet. And that's okay. Whereas I think in my 20s, it was like, oh, we're friends. Like everyone was a friend. And it's like, no, not everyone is a friend. And Mm. yeah. So like what defines a friend? Like what is a friend to you? Um, I used to think friendship for me was um, was almost like years put in. So like loyalty, you know each other, you can share things with each other. And it still is. But um, I do go more based on just the vibe, the connection that I have with someone. Because I have met some really great people in the last maybe year, four years or so. And... Um, yeah, it's really just the connection that you have. Um, I've also learned how to be a better friend. So that that goes without saying, like, I was a horrible friend for the the better part of my 20s. I, I would say, like, from 20, from, like, my teens to maybe, like, mid-20s, I was not what I would consider to be a good friend at all. Um, and I take full ownership of that. But I do think as I've gotten to be a better friend, I've gotten to recognize people who are really good friends, too. And... Um, Friendship is still what it means before, which is like trust, loyalty, respect, um, you know, it's just that feeling that you can share things with people because some, some people you really like, but you can't share things with them. And um, and just making it work every single relationship in your life, whether it's a friendship or it's romantic, like you have to work at it. You do. It's so true. So those would be kind of pillars, I think, of, of good friendships. Yeah. And, you know, late, as of late, like my... I guess definition of friendship, I guess, has changed a little bit. Because it's like, now that I've changed, it's like, I'm looking for different things. Mm-hmm. And I even titled it as, like, my that's my friendship love language. Okay. <laughs> I even said that to, to one friend. I was like, this is how I feel supported or I feel appreciated in this friendship. If you were to check in on me for certain things, you know that I'm, like, striving for, mm-hmm. like, my old business and blog and stuff. It's like, if you did more check-ins, like, this would be great for me. Like, and I had to communicate that to her because... If not, then she wouldn't have known. And yeah, that just goes to show like I'm changing too. I'm going to need more from this friendship too. But I also wanted to know like, is there anything that I could be doing more of for you? Are you happy here yeah. as well? It's like, and that's really important. I could, because yeah. I couldn't, because um, I sat with myself like uh, for a while and I was just like, okay, it's like I'm looking for these things. Yeah. Can I really, can I request that without reciprocating? Also changing? Yeah. yeah, it's like, am I doing enough? So it's like, that's that's something that I always think about. Yeah, that's really important to, to be able to make sure like the things that you're looking for, that you're able to give them as well. Yeah, 
Yeah. yeah, I couldn't do like a yeah. I was. I think that's one thing that I've learned in this life is like I can't just be siloed. I can't just be like too selfish about my feelings and emotions. Like I have to also incorporate that there's someone else in this friendship as well. So and yeah, I'm still learning. I'm not perfect, but um, <laughs> I'm still I'm still learning about that. And yeah, and then another thing with friendships and I guess relationships as well is just communication, which is hard to do. I was just about to say that it's yeah. hard to do. It's hard to say. It's hard to speak up and say when you're feeling hurt or when something could have been done differently or this or that disappointment is the hardest thing to communicate i find it's an uncomfortable conversation yeah so i'm actually really happy to hear that you were able to have that conversation with a friend because i think a lot of times we hold on to those feelings and um we just let them sit they simmer and then we end up acting out in different ways because we're not communicating the root of the problem yeah, for me, it was like, I'm, if I don't say this, I'm going to end up resenting you secretly. And that's not like, what is that? That's taking away from my energy. Yeah. You're not even aware of it. And then I look stupid. You know what I mean? So it's like, no, I need you to know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But yeah, absolutely. Still that. <laughs> yeah, communication is a really, really powerful tool. And I think that's why anytime you read any books about success, about growth, about spirituality, any book that's worth reading, you will find that communication is like the, the first thing that the most important thing that you need to work on because it, because it's so important. And even if you think you're a good communicator, chances are there are ways that you can improve. There are ways that you can better your communication style. And that's one thing that I'm really learning right now because I feel the same way. Like sometimes I'm really upset about something and when I get down to it, it's just because I haven't communicated. I'm not even sharing with the person that's upsetting me mm -hmm. why I'm upset and that I'm upset. And it's really silly to expect people to be able to, for some reason, take that on or understand you when you're not expressing yourself. Or read your mind or anything like that. I think the, the biggest disappointments come from when we expect, when we have that expectation of others to, to like understand us and like know that we should be upset at things yeah. and like all of that you know yeah they say expectation is the root cause of like disappointment so yeah 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 communication if there's any takeaway from this it's just work <laughs> on your communication skills it will it will just strengthen all your relationships and it will make you a better human because then you won't have to you won't feel the need to run away from really hard feelings or hard conversations because hard conversations are worth having they're not fun but they're important because I think that's how you grow as a, as a person and that's how you grow your relationships too. Because if you're able to have a hard conversation with someone and be able to come out of it together, that just makes you better friends, better partners, better business associates, and, and everyone wins in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I want to thank you, Jolie, for coming on my podcast. This is another spontaneous episode. Um, but it was really cool because, you know, you got to share your insight and, you know, all of the, the opinions you had about my podcast that I didn't even know, yeah. um, which is special. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. Bye. <laughs>